Hey, this is Michael Lindsay from Vital MX. We're here at Chaparral Motorsports today, and I'm sure as many of us have done, we've either crashed and damaged or broken the radiator. So we're gonna show you how to replace it along with changing the coolant. Now that we're here in the shop with our RMZ250, we're gonna start by draining the coolant before we get into getting the radiator off. Uh, tools wise, this is a pretty simple process. Mostly just need like an eight millimeter T handle to get the plastic, the radiator off, the drain bolt. Uh, a Phillips screwdriver for the radiator hose clamps, maybe an Allen key for the drain bolt, but for the most part it should be an 8mm. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure you have the bike as far over on the stand as possible to expose this drain bolt so the fluid can flow out without draining onto the stand or anything being in the way. Uh, a lot of the bikes, it's also really good to take the engine case guard here out of the way as well, so you either don't get coolant in it and it's also out of the way of your drain pan. Now, before we take the drain bolt off, we're actually going to want to loosen the radiator cap and take it off. This is so air can enter the radiator as the fluid is escaping. For the most part, the coolant drain is usually on the water pump cover. Uh, if you look at your cover, you usually find most of the bolts go through all the way to the case. So look at your bottom bolt. Typically, the bolt above it is actually the coolant drain. The easiest way to tell is look for a copper wash on the back of the bolt, which tells you that it is sealing a type of fluid. Now, just to ensure that we've actually drained as much of the coolant out of the system as possible, we're gonna try to hold this here and lean the bike over. In this case, it might be a good idea to have two people help you just so you don't end up under the bike, but uh, if possible, it's usually pretty easy to just grab the handlebar and lean it over on the stand a bit. Just get a little extra out of there. Now that we've drained the coolant, we're gonna go ahead and get the radiator shroud off so we can get down in here and work on the radiator and get all the hoses off without anything being in our way. You know, usually a radiator shroud is more than likely three to four bolts, typically an eight millimeter. So of course this is a pretty easy step. Just take a look at the radiator, find where the radiator hoses mount to the radiator and start from there. Uh, go ahead and take your hose clamps and loosen them. And go ahead and remove the radiator hose. Biggest thing you want to do is to remember if you have a hose that's stuck, don't grab a set of pliers and try to compress the hose and pull it off unless you're gonna do it way back here because there's a high chance you might do it too far up on the hose and crimp the inlet or outlet hole of the radiator by accident. The majority of our radiators are usually mounted in two places, in front of the radiator to the frame. Uh, usually the radiator louver is almost always in the way on some brands, you may have to undo another bolt to get to these. Sometimes they just pop right out of the way. To allow you access to the two bolts. And as you can see, I've made a little bit of a mess here because we did have a little bit of coolant here in the bottom. So if you have a bike that has a radiator mounted on each side, as the majority of our full-size models do, there's a little crossover tube here that connects the two radiators you're going to want to undo. Sometimes I like to wait to do these last so I can take the radiator here and try to twist it off. This one can be a pain. And usually, if we're dealing with the right side one, we also have the overflow tube here. You can either choose to remove it or pull it up through the entire bike. Um, depending on the hose, sometimes I've had better luck just taking the hose out instead of tearing it, trying to get it off as these hoses usually aren't that tough. Just make sure you check the routing of where this hose comes from so you can put it back where it belongs later. Now we have our radiator off. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. The radiator we're using, albeit a little bit dirty, is actually fine. We have no damage, so we're gonna remount this. If you didn't have a radiator that was damaged and you're actually putting a new one on, usually you're gonna have to take these spacers and the little rubber grommets out of your old radiator and place them in your new one. Usually you'll press these little guys out and then just push the rubber grommets out and push them in the new ones, put these back in, and then you can put your radiator back on or your new one on. Based on my personal preference, I usually take this overflow tube out, so I'm gonna kind of route that down the direction it needs to go before I get started here. 
now that we're back in here, we're going to put the crossover tube on first. You can usually just grab it with a set of needle nose and work it back on. So in this case, uh, since I'm able to wiggle around the radiator because it's not bolted down yet, I'm going to go ahead and put my radiator hoses back on. Now I'm going to clamp the radiator back down. Uh, of course, we want to remember to clamp down our radiator hose clamps. Big thing is once again, remembering when you get the hose on, you can feel along the hose where it's soft. Here is the lip of the inlet tube. You want to make sure that the hose is on far enough that you're getting the clamp up and above that little ridge because the clamp sucks down around the hose behind that ridge and that's what helps hold this on. So you want to make sure you're not clamping the radiator hose clamp around the edge or otherwise more than likely you're going to have a radiator hose that won't be sealed properly and may slip off during use. Uh, for the most part, you don't want to make these too tight. Uh, big thing to watch for is in the middle of the radiator hose, there are all these little cleats. Usually you're over tightening it if you're starting to see the radiator hose actually protrude through the radiator hose clamp. Now that we have our radiator hoses tied back up, we're ready to fill the bike with coolant. In this case, we're going to use the same kind of coolant we were using before. But if you're switching coolants, mostly if you're going from a water-based to a non-water-based coolant, you're going to want to actually flush the system. And in this case, that means you don't want to flush it with water. You're actually going to want to use compressed air to get it out. A uh, good idea is to take like a rubber tip uh, air nozzle that you can uh, seal the top of the radiator. You're going to want to take the hoses off, blow air through the system, get all the coolant out. Take your other side, do the same. Um, big thing is basically look at the cooling system because it's different from bike to bike. Find where coolant is, whether if it's in the engine, you're gonna to wanna to take the radiator hose off the top and take whatever the exit system one is out, blow air through there so it gets out of the cylinder water jackets and gets clear of the engine. You're gonna to wanna to do it to both radiators, all the hoses, just every little area of the cooling system to ensure that you've gone the entire system clear before you start filling the bike again. So now we're ready to fill our bike with some coolant. Uh, big thing here is now we've got to get all the air out of the system. For the most part on motocross bikes, this is not very difficult. Uh, first thing we're gonna do here is fill our radiator until it appears to be full. Uh, because we do have the crossover tube, we have access to the other side. So the easiest thing to do is lean the bike towards the other radiator, allowing fluid to wash over into the other side and allowing for the most part, you can usually get the air to come out of the other radiator going uphill and it'll escape out this side. To know if you're successful, basically you'll set the bike back down and as we had happen, our coolant level has actually dropped because it's gone into the other radiator and it's allowed more air to escape. Uh, if you do end up with a bike that does not have a bleed on the opposite side radiator and you wanna ensure all the air is out of the system, you can do with a bike as you would with an automobile. You can start the engine with the cap off. This will allow coolant to go through the engine and through the entire cooling system. It'll bring air up to the top and allow it to escape through the open radiator cap. Of course, because of heat build, you don't want to have the bike running for more than maybe a minute or so just to ensure none of the fluid starts to push out of the bike. From there, things are pretty straightforward. You're going to reinstall the radiator cap, the radiator shroud, louver, engine guard, put all your bolts back in, tighten everything down. From there, you've either replaced your radiator, you've freshened your coolant, your bike is running cool and is ready to go. If you want to check out more tech tips, jump back to vitalmx.com for more.